and welcome to a very special Chinese episode of Motors for the Masters here in China. Why are we here? Well, firstly, I'm on holiday, and secondly, we are going to look at two SUVs. Why are we looking at SUVs? Well, that's because they are extremely popular in China, a big status thing. So first, we're going to have a look at the best-selling SUV that China has. That's the Haval H6. And then we're going to have a look at the new 2018 Geely SUV. And that especially because Geely now owns Volvo. So we're going to see just what Volvo have done with this car. First one is this, the Haval. 86 from 2018 and next we'll be showing you the Geely. So the Haval 86 is powered by a 2 litre petrol engine which develops 190 brake horsepower which means it's good for 0 to 60 in some seconds. So inside it's actually very nice indeed, it's very comfortable and there's lots of sort of blue chrome in here. Now you get as most cars these days in China, the standard screen that controls everything, your phone, your sat-nav, which is very essential when you're driving around lots of Chinese towns, and of course your stereo. And the seats are really comfortable. They're leather, but very nice indeed. I absolutely love it in here. It's really nice. You've got air conditioning, you've got uh, paddle gears, which is very unusual to find in a car these days, unless of course you're spending a lot of money. You also get a massive dual sunroof and gadgets everywhere. Chinese people love gadgets and they love things that have buttons and switches and everything everywhere. And this has lots of them. What's it like to drive inside? Well, like I said before, it does feel very comfortable. You do have your flappy paddle gears, which we shall try in a minute. But I just want to look a little bit more at these gadgets. Now you've got obviously your traction control on and off as well. You've got automatic parking. You've got the electronic parking. You've got uh, flappy paddle gears as well as the manual gears you can use on here as well. You've got heated seats. You've got park assist. You've got electric mirrors, electric windows electric seats, sport mode, economy mode, there's so many different things you can do in this car and it feels really really comfortable, I can't stress that enough it's just a lovely place to be, it's quiet you know? and in a minute you're going to be very surprised at how much this car costs now the Haval 86 is a very popular car in China which is why I chose this one but is it any good off-road. Well, there's a brick. Let's find out, shall we? Over the brick we go. Well, it went over it. So, it's not that bad. Okay, it's a little bit bumpy. It's not brilliant, but we are in sport mode, so let's change that with a bong and put that in road mode. And let's see again. Hardly felt it. Tiny little brick that was, fair enough. More of a pebble. But yeah, it's okay. Now these aren't meant to go off-road, they're not really off-road cars, they are status symbols and that's what a lot of Chinese people use these cars for, as status symbols. That's why they all go for SUVs or big cars, but this one is actually really good and I'm really pleased. So let's just test out this flappy paddle gearbox, bearing in mind we're in Chinese traffic now, so you have to bear with me as I negotiate my way around everybody. Well, here's that. If we slap it into manual gears here, I'm now in third gear. 
into second and you don't even feel it change gear. It's really, really smooth. Now if we change up from second into third, it's amazing. Absolutely amazing. I'm staggered at how well this changes gear. You can't even feel it change gear. That is really, really good. Really good. Not air. So, what's it like in the back? Well, it's extremely spacious. Now, I'm sitting here with this seat in the position that I would have it in driving, and I've got that much, I can't even stretch my fingers, that much space between my knees and the seat in front. It's extremely comfortable. Very, very spacious. This sunroof goes all the way back to make it a complete panoramic view. And I can't stress enough how much space there is in this car. I'm amazed, absolutely amazed. What about rear boot space? Well, despite everything in the back, it's still quite spacious. You've got enough to get your weekly shopping or even a push chair. Again, lots of space. Now, the basic Cabal H6 is only £12,000, but this one is the top of the range. It's got all the gadgets on it. This one is just £17,000. 17000 for a brand new range SUV. Now that is a fantastic price. So now let's move on to the Geely, and this is called the Geely Bouillet. Now this one has the 1.8 litre turbo engine, which develops 184 horsepower, which means it's good for a 0 to 60 time of 7.8 seconds, and a top speed of 121 miles an hour. Want to see the engine? There it is. No dirty, no dusty, but you expect that anywhere in China because it doesn't matter if you have a brand new car or an old car, it's going to get dirty in the first five minutes. So let's take it for a drive. Now, the first thing you notice when you get inside this car is that it does have excellent quality. Now, it's got four cameras on the car you've got one on the front, one on the back, and two on the side, so it gives you this 360 projection on the screen and you can see all around you. Now, of course, this has got covers on it, but under the covers, it's got very soft leather indeed and it is great quality. It's not huge in terms of technology, but it is very clean. And as you can see here, it's very smooth, very clean, and it feels very nice to be in. Now, of course, that means that being brand new and being brand new technology you don't get the cd player you get mp3 and usb but everything is usable as always through this screen of course this is all in chinese because it's a chinese car but you expect superb quality because now geely owns volvo so they have to be a very good quality car and it is indeed <laughs> Well, once you're inside the car, it is extremely nice to drive. Again, very smooth, very comfortable. But you would expect it because Geely is a good quality make. Now, I remember when Geely were making cars long ago, and they were really shoddy quality. Like most, let's be honest, beginner Chinese firms. But this is a class above the rest. It feels very smooth. The gear change is lovely. You don't even notice it change gear, to be honest. And although it's a Chinese car, you've still got a lot of the buttons in English, which says to me that they are thinking about bringing the car out in other countries. Well, again, what can I say? It just feels really comfortable. It doesn't feel as though you're in a Chinese car. And I mean that in the nicest possible way, not because I think Chinese cars are bad, but because they have a reputation for being cheap. 
and this does not feel cheap. I have to be careful on this road because they use this road for learners so I've got to watch out for the odd learner. So imagine how Chinese people usually drive in and out all over the place and that they're learning. <laughs> it's fun! So anyway, what we're going to do now, we're going to stick this in sport mode and we're going to put a foot down and see how it goes. Are you ready? Now uh, it does hold it in gear quite a long time. But what we're going to do now is do the same thing again, put our foot down, but in normal driving mode. So let's turn sport mode off, turn the car around and stick it in normal driving mode and see how it performs. So we'll take this learn at the same time, shall we? Okay, so we're going to sit it here. And are you ready? Three, two, one, go! Not bad at all actually, I'm up to 100 kilometers in about 7.8 seconds, strange that isn't it? Uh, I'm really really pleased, again I can't fault this car one little bit so far, it's very smooth, you move the car around all over the place and it just feels really well planted on the road. You've got a little bit of roll, but you expect that in an SUV. So looking around my cabin, a lot of the leather is very, very soft. That's lovely. It's really nice. I just can't fault this quality. I'm really pleased. I think what we should do now is find out how much it costs and whether it's worthwhile getting. Now what this car also comes with, I don't think it's standard to be honest, is this. Because a lot of people don't wear their seatbelt in China. Now they're starting to bring the laws in that seatbelts are compulsory, but they don't tend to enforce it. So you tend to find this in the place of the seatbelt. And I look a bit weird wearing a seatbelt in China. Hmm. So what about the space in the back? Well, again, like the Haval, it's very spacious and very comfortable. Again, they've put covers on the seats and that's not to make it more comfortable, it's to basically keep them clean and protect the seats. As you can see here, the quality is very nice indeed and it's very lovely to sit in. And again, knee space, very adequate. Headroom, very adequate. And another massive sunroof. What about space in the back? Well again, it's another success story, but it's, this is actually bigger than the Haval. I'm amazed at how small the car might look on the outside, it's ginormous on the inside. And you can see so much room in here. Very nice indeed. Very nice. Now the only thing that disappoints you with this car is it does have a twin exhaust, but they are the smallest exhaust pipes I've ever seen on an SUV. Base model starts at just Ten thousand pounds. Ten thousand pounds. This one again is the top of the range and it comes in at just sixteen thousand pounds. Sixteen thousand pounds for all this luxury. A car that is built by a company that now owns Volvo. So you're going to get really good quality. Now I cannot believe how cheap that is and I really hope they bring this car to the UK. Well, that's it for this episode. Thank you very much for joining us. It's been a very short episode. I do apologise if the quality hasn't been fantastic, but we are shooting with very limited cameras and lots of background noise in the middle of China. So until next time, when normal service will be resumed, thank you very much for joining us, and we'll see you again soon. Now, from a 38-degree sun, I'm off. Bye-bye.